talk about these slammers. Well, this was uh, a bait that was introduced many years ago that uh, I got my hands on and uh, really, really had some great days. Uh, great night, nighttime and mm -hmm. daytime fishing. Uh, still a good bait today. Um, I think I got these baits back then for like 20, 25 bucks, 20, 25 bucks. I believe now they're like 45, 50 bucks on up. Yep. But uh, I got some colors to this day that they don't manufacture, and I'm, I have them, they hold on to them. Um, you catch a pound and a half fish, you catch a 10 and a half pound fish. It doesn't matter. Everything bites them. It doesn't matter. They eat this bait, uh, just like any other bait, too. Uh, size don't mean anything because if a, a bass is a bass, they're going to attack it. They're territorial, um, you know, but you're looking for that big bite. And uh, fishing baits like this, you can see I have uh, rounded bent. I was about to say, man, what's up with those hooks? Yeah, <laughs> that that's because I uh, pre-fish, ah, do a little pre-fish with that. Okay. And um, I have to, and I saved these fish and actually have come back and caught them yeah and just look it's a locator absolutely it's a locator for the right time you know fish in the right time right place and i've used them for locators too wow what a great and sip. you know if you know how if you know where they live you know you can come back and try to get them locating them is key first piece of the puzzle in my opinion yeah i don't care if it's a, a hard bait swim bait you can throw it out there and literally literally draw them in and once you start funneling them and find out where those fish are you come back and present a bait and eventually you're gonna hook up but the key is is that finding those fish that are interested so as a tournament guy you utilize these big baits to locate them I, even I, back in the day I utilized I utilized the big baits um, and in fact Clear Lake is a great place to do that at uh, Delta um, you can really really hone in and find out what's really happening when you start throwing big baits then you go down the conventional tackle during the tournament, catch numbers, and you get the big fish here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, divide the men from the boys. But uh, yeah, I have a lot of history with these baits as well. Uh, don't throw them a lot too much anymore, but I still have them in my arsenal. And uh, within time, there's always a, a time and place, and I won't hesitate to throw them. Love it. It's awesome. What else you got in the cupboards, man? You see well, something special. Something that brings back some memories. I want a bait that's got a story behind it. I'll tell you what. I'm going to go way, way back. And I'm going to bring out something that... Oh, if i got to dig into my archive here. Because you, you grew up and fished right here where this big bait phenomenon really took hold. And you watched these guys and evolved with it. Take us to the beginning. I'm going to take you way, way, way back. I'm going to go... I'm going to go into the 70s. Oh, man. See, I didn't even expect this to go that far back. That's crazy. Uh, I'm going to go back... Uh, definitely, definitely... Old, old. And... They're classics. Some of these baits are classic. Uh... Bombers. Well, if I can get the right, okay. Here um, we go. Balsa, Bagley's. Bagley's. Balsa. Balsa bees. Balsa baits. Oh my gosh. Look at that chartreuse bass. That thing's sick. You know they were really back in the day. These baits shine. They still shine. You can't find them anymore. Uh, all balsa baits were just tremendous, tremendous. And um, you're gonna laugh at this bait here. Um, what the heck is that? I don't even know what that is. It's a it's a kind of like a it's a spoon, but it's like for walk for walking and it flaps. <laughs> That's uh, crazy. On vegetation. Okay. With you can and with, like I say, it's got the skirt, and you can always put a little trailer on the back. Buzz that I've along. literally never seen that. Yeah, th this is just this is way back. <laughs> this is way way back. That's super cool. But I still have some more. Oh. And even the twin spins. Ah. The twin spins that we were making back in the day, too. This is way back in the day we were making the twin spins. 
uh, of our so. own, and then we put a lead head on there, our jig. Uh huh. Kind of like a beetle spin with just two arms. Yeah, out. we would do this as well, and this is really, really old school, and guys didn't know what was happening. I mean, they just didn't know. You know, what's crazy did. is this. This past fall, uh, a friend of mine, he's from Australia. He makes these giant double arm twin spin spinner baits from Murray Pod, but mm-hmm. I was fishing them for muskies same okay. deal but like you know humongous okay so it's cool to see you know how far back that really goes well i'm gonna take us actually back to the 70s i have some baits i gotta pull out the right box that when i was very young that i um was introduced to and did very well and they are true true classics i mean this is like the vault of early early bass fishing sound like a liar <laughs> and I do have them excuse me absolutely ooh we're gonna talk about that box right there at some point. <laughs> we'll, get in, we'll get into that. I wanna I wanna tap into some of those really, really, really old, old, old baits when I was very, very young. I can't believe I stashed them and oh, oh I see some of that. Look I at see this. some fat wraps. Here's some flashbacks, balsa baits. Uh, oh, you got from the Mans to the Rapalos, Fat Wraps, Mans to uh, 15s. Yes. Uh, they don't make them like this no more. These baits here are true I classics mean, and fish catching machines. I this mean, color right here in a Shad Wrap SR5, I caught my second and third bass ever on. First time I caught two fish in a day, I ran like a, I walked down like an eighth quarter mile down the bank at Pudding Stone for my mom fishing on the pier. Caught one on the cast, ran it all the way back to my mom, ran all the way back, and on the next cast, I caught my third one. I was like, oh my god, this is crazy. Wow. Yeah. These baits are phenomenal. Um, I'm almost afraid to throw some of them sometimes <sighs> because you can't find them. Uh, you know, and I've done so well through the years on them, and I know they work and they'll always work. Uh, everything's got to have a rattle on it today. Everything's got to have a flash. Everything's got to be so dramatic, but to be honest with you, the subtleties and more natural, quiet, non-rattling baits, especially clear water, high pressure, mm-hmm. makes a big difference. Yep. It truly, truly does. Uh, my 70 box, for some reason, we're going to have to get back with you on that one. Um, <laughs> I'm going to jump over into this box over here so we have a little bit of uh, attention on this one here. Yeah, this is... Uh, gosh... This is the flashback. This is the old, the old, old, oh old, goodness. old, old, and I repeat, old, 10 inch cast eight. See the gill mod, the hook mods. Tell me about the mods and what, what made you do that? Well, I like doing this, especially when I'm fishing bottom. When I'm fishing on the bottom and I want to get down there deeper and slow roll, uh, I switched over, you know, to the top hook. A um, lot better, less 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 snags, good hookup ratio. And to be honest with you, 75% of the time I get them on the steamer hook. Mm. You know, this thing about everybody saying, oh, they're going to hit it head first and all this. They don't always do that. Agreed. And, and you know, it depends on where you're at as far as depth. It's how the fish is positioned, how they attack the bait. From the bottom, from the side, from on top. And it all, it's all about bait placement and where you are in the zone. For me, this is night and day. I think I, I really do well overall because I can be very versatile with the system. Shallow, deep, mid-depth. Um, mid-depth, yeah, it's nice to go bottom hook as well. Uh, I haven't had any issues with bottom hooking. 
Uh, I know I've heard some negative things about it, but to be honest with you, uh, most, most the majority of the time I've done very well with the bottom hook as well. But I like the top overall just for consistency and variations from depths. Works very well. And the mods too, you know, the gill. Get, you know, clear water. Every little bit helps too when it comes to high pressured areas too. The subtleties sometimes mm -hmm. can make a difference. But once they're on track and they're zoning in on the bait, they're on it. They truly are. These baits are, are no longer available like this anymore. But you know, now you have different changed. options. They've changed. They've changed. Yes, things have changed. Um, I'll still resort back to these, but this is like my. This is like my my. How could you put it? This would be my trophy slash. Uh, when I need to bring this out, I'll bring these baits out. I don't throw them every day, but when I do bring them out, I do catch fish on them. I know when to throw them and where to throw them. I wish I could still get more of these like this. This is the newer, uh, newer version of what we have available today. Uh, this is a um, HUD, 10 inch HUD. And uh, I really haven't had a chance to fish this yet, but uh, I know it'll work. It looks really good. Uh, I've been waiting for this for a long time. So you like that 10 inch size range? I like 10 inch. Yeah, I, it's like 10 inch, go big or go home. That's it. You know, that's the way I look at it. Go big or go home. Uh, if I'm going to do it, I'm in it all the way. And I'm going to go throw the big bait. Uh, don't get too much into the smaller baits. Um, yeah, 8 inch is good. You're going to get more bites. You got the shot of a big one. But this seals the deal right here. This is it. You know, this is money. You know, you want that one big bite? Throw the big bait. Put the time and effort into it. Definitely. I like it. A little six inch bait smith. A little bait smith. This here, night and day, yeah. That's you a great tournament bait. Take there. that out there and you can do some damage all the way up and down the west coast, all the way to the east coast on a bait that size. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect tournament bait. I mean, all around. Just night and day, you'll get them on that. Great bait. I see you picked up some new toys too from last night, huh? Wow. Give us some impressions on that thing. Now, this caught my eye. Yeah, I saw it on the, on the internet a few days ago. Yeah, I saw, in fact, uh, you were out there slinging this bait, and I never thought, what, three, four days later, I'd be having this in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> this was a surprise, and I'll tell you, long overdue. Uh, finally, somebody's came out with a good, balanced soft bait. Uh, very versatile yet uh, friendly when it comes to hooking fish and uh, separation from the bait from the mouth of the fish and uh, there's no pendulum swing there's no resistance it's all hooked to fish line straight through to the guide tip and it's uh, a straight pull do you have horror stories on hooking big fish on these heavy soft plastic baits yes and, and no yeah i do i mean we have our good good and bad stories um i've been very fortunate i've had a lot of success but the few horror stories every now and then you'll have a bait that will will will, will ball up in their mouth and if a, if a bait takes and turns takes a turn like this mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of resistance and they're gonna pull they're gonna rip they're gonna rip out and for you to keep a fish pegged like this it's pretty tough you, I mean it's just wind and grind and hopefully that it doesn't it doesn't pop loose but uh, problem is is with fixed hooks you know sometimes with the fixed hook or you got the treble hook either or they can tend to they can tend to pull out pop out this system here i believe is going to solve a lot of that this system here is going to eliminate fish being lost right at the boat mm -hmm. when they take that last turn or on the jump the jump the initial jump the turn at the boat this is going to keep them pegged and keep that line tight. Uh, like I say, don't drop, don't drop the rod tip. Drop the rod tip, you're going to lose fish. You got to wind. Keep a bend in the rod. Keep that, keep that bend in the rod. Keep the pressure and keep them coming forward. The momentum in your videos, you show that. Yeah, I want to get them in. <laughs> you, show that, you show that. You know, you're slinging eight, nine pound fish in the boat. I think I bounced them. To be honest with you, I don't think. 10 pound fish, I don't believe I bounced a 10. 
I've bounced eights and nines. You nice. Know? But 10, no. I 10 is when the net comes out. <laughs> well, um, here, so the problem is like there have been times, especially when I fish solo, where I have a big fish, do everything right, get her to the boat, and then she's at the boat, and I have to fumble trying to get the net one-handed, and I lose focus for just that split second, and my rod tip is a super high, and it's causing her to jump, or oh, there's yeah. not, there's just a hair of slack. And in reaching for that net, and if I, you know, even if I don't fumble the net, I've lost some monsters in just that that little bit of a window. Uh, yeah, you're talking split seconds yeah. there, where where you change the angle. Once yeah. you start changing the angle, the fish is going to react to that rod tip, mm -hmm. and you're basically leading that fish in a direction and then all of a sudden you change it that's right and that fish is going to turn and go this way and your rods over here you got slack however it may be it hits the net you know you're just trying to just drag. so much can go wrong you're trying to drag that fish into the net but yet you come so close and you're right at the tip and that fish turns and it's gone and i've learned that as long as i can efficiently judge the scenario on how well she's hooked and the you know uh, speed she's coming in, uh, my odds of landing them have been better at, in circumstances just to bounce them. Of course, you keep the momentum. That's it. You keep the momentum, and as long as that fish is coming in like a torpedo, mm -hmm. and you got them coming, their momentum will help you get that fish in the boat. That's mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of guys don't realize that even conventional fishing, light line. Oh yeah. You keep that fish moving, and just the momentum. It's like saltwater guys do it all the time. That's it. And and the saltwater saltwater fishermen know how to do it. Yep. If you can take that and put that in freshwater fishing, believe me. I'm fortunate to have that perspective because you know I grew most up most guys don't fishing. see that. No. I, you know, <coughs> I learned that Mark Higashi has mentioned that to me. He's telling me what he's done on light spinning gear and light tackle. You know, I've been doing it myself, but now I get it. What's behind that is the momentum of the fish is driving to the boat. Mm -hmm. Just keep that going. They're not turning. They're not reacting. They're just coming in and, and the flow. In fact, I bounced. They'll go with the flow. I bounced a seven pounder in a few months ago. Okay. Top water. Nice. Uh, 50 pound. I was on 50 pound braid, straight braid. And this thing came out and crushed my bait. Winded it in. I didn't realize how big it was on conventional tackle. In fact, I was using the frog rod, and I had a 50-pound, and I literally just penned and swung this fish in. Didn't realize how big it was until he was coming over the side. Yeah. And that fish... And it's like, whoa, did I just do that? <clears throat> I'm like, wow, do I want to break a rod? <laughs> There's a technique to it, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And, I, and, te and, and I, did, I did everything right, textbook, and I went in and choked up and brought the, my hand up midway on the rod and just brought her in and lifted her in but i keep going back and li li looking at this this year i bounced a lot of fish in the boat bounced a lot and I'll, I'll tell you i go out a lot by myself but i'll tell you what i've learned how to manage without a net and that's the key you can learn to manage without a net you know i always have the net there though <clears throat> you definitely know. have the net ready it's always good to have it ready there's a time and place for it too mm -hmm. um and you're and you're you're going big you're going big bait big fish uh you're the big hunter and you gotta you gotta have that net that's your life support without that you don't have a story you know no you I know mean. at the end of the day well coulda woulda shoulda but with the net made a big difference you know and i know the feeling i definitely know the feeling but this bait i'm gonna go back to this this bait right here <clears throat> definitely is is gonna turn some heads and I believe uh, with the way it's been designed, the re quick release on the hook system is epic. I mean, that right there just tells you all you have is hook. And now you have separation. Okay? So no pendulum, all solid. I don't solid. think people realize how important that is. No, but it's mechanics. That's it's it. all about in the mechanic end of it. You know, you got to think about that too. It means a lot, and this and this bait will track. I haven't thrown the bait, but just how, how well it's been built, and it's such a solid tail. It's a whole different type of tail. That it's going to kick so much water, but yet it's also going to 
It swims on the way down. It's also going to... I know this bait's always going to do this. It's not going to do this, this. It's going to be this. Okay? And the color turns a lot of people off, I'm sure. But for me... <clears throat> That's a great looking color for me. It's just a good all around forge base. It'll work everywhere in any water column, anywhere you go. Shad, hitch. Um, as far as the, um, the heron, blue heron, or the, what do they call them? The, um, the ospreys? Excuse me. No, the. Um, oh, back east. Their main, their main forge. Uh, they have, oh, blue back uh, herring? Blue back herring. You know, this bait has a lot of potential to, to take all around the country as well. Um, and I believe we're going to have a, a little takeoff from this bait to another bait down the road. But we won't talk too much about it yet. <laughs> but from what I hear, we got good things coming. Yeah, some exciting things coming from those guys. So look forward to that in the future. But this is just the tip of the iceberg for right now from what I understand. Yep. My man here is... Uh, Fortunate for us to get a hold of these last night. Fortunate for me to have this bait. Well, it's been Can't wait to sling it. It's been a fun one to test. Yeah, this bait here is going to be uh, coming out soon and uh, in your local stores too, I believe, right? That's right. Performance Tackle. Hit up Mark. That's great. Yeah, come on out to Performance Tackle. We'll hook you up over there, definitely. But waiting for this one to get out.